<laughs> yeah. When people ask what would we bring to the to a cave, if we all say William Hurt. <laughs> I feel like he did then have some good life advice. Did he give you any advice on set? Um, did he give me good advice? He said never watch the monitor. Never go back and watch the monitor. Um, which was which was always a fickle temptress for me anyway. I never knew how I felt about going and watching playback after a scene. And he really he like he made a decision for us and was like no actors behind Andrew, no actors behind the monitor. And at first I was like you know no I'm gonna go look if I want to look. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll try it. And ever since then, I'm like, I stay far, far away from, from the monitor. And it really does, it really does change your performance to not being so worried about what you're doing or watching what you're doing. Now there's a lot of kissing scenes. Yeah. How did couple. you prep for that? A lot of chapstick? <laughs> yeah. A lot, of, a lot of gum, a lot of mints. Um, it's funny, having known Sersha a little bit, uh, because, you know, we spent time off camera on The Lovely Bones, obviously, and... Um, just kind of having that past, even though we didn't really know each other, and it's been a couple of years, uh, it makes it easier. It makes it easier that she's really professional, and so is Max, and we're all we're all buds. It's, it's boring, I know, but <laughs> we're all buddies, and it's easy. <laughs> Diane said that the boys were all working out a lot in between filming. A lot of testosterone going on. <laughs> what did you guys do for workouts? Uh, just you know, we had, we all had our own diets. Max was eating two steaks a day, I think. Uh, <laughs> I had dropped weight, and then because I wanted sort of that cave, not not emaciation, because it got pretty close to that. Uh, but you know, you're not. I felt that there's a very specific diet in the cave, and that's kind of what I went with. But then I realized I was too skinny. Put some on and started. We just kind of hit hit the hit the weights separately whenever we had time. You know, when we had time off, we were all just kind of running off and some weights in the trailer too. That you know, in between in between takes, because you have very little time. Uh, but yeah, mostly just that. You working out with a trainer? Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't. No, I was just kind of off doing my my own bit. Um, because I've you know had to get in shape for certain films before, mm -hmm. um, just because they're physical roles and you don't want to get injured. Um, yeah. so just kind of my my previous knowledge of that, and and I work out with stunt guys. I have some stunt friends who are buddies, and okay. they trained me a bit for beforehand in Los Angeles here, and uh, we worked out together. Um, what does yeah. a stunt buddy work out like? It's pretty intense, but luckily I was actually in pretty good shape at that point, so I was like keeping up with them, because they're, man, the things they can do, they're, they, that's what they do for a living, they like, you know, their bodies are always in shape, because they, exactly, they can't get hurt, uh, they do, but they try not to, uh, but yeah, it's... So like P90X? Or a little bit of that, we did some boxing, did some running, I have this thing called a Bulgarian bag that you swing around and like do squats with, and uh, uh, yeah, most, mostly just that, some just different things they make up that you just kind of circuit train. I feel like you and Max have a pretty good romance. Is that true? Max has become a pretty close friend of mine. <laughs> so yeah. What was it like when you two were, you know, working out and, and filming? Uh, we just, you know, you never know what to expect going into any film, whether they're a young actor or, or, or an older actor. And I think we both kind of felt that way about each other. I, I had heard from you know, a confidant in the industry, a casting director, that you know, she's like, I love Max. She's so great. You guys are going to get on so well. Um, and so And she was absolutely right. I mean, you know. Apparently he was really nervous to like meet me. He said, and like it was, you could, I could tell the first few times we hung out. I'm like, what's wrong with this guy? Like, just, <laughs> just hang out with me. I'm trying to call him to hang out. Um, and uh, but uh, but yeah, we you know we have a very similar sense of humor. And we end up getting on uh, really well. Did that answer your question? I don't remember. Just <laughs> <laughs> off on a tangent. <laughs> um, is there an aspect of Ian that really drew you to that role? Um, Andrew and I had a conversation before I read with Sersha on the phone, uh, and he mentioned how he really loved this interspecies romance and how it was interesting to him and, and in a really strange way I understood what he was saying. Uh, and he also um, talked about how Ian is evolved, one of the more evolved uh, in the cave. Him and Jeb, and, and Jamie's innocence, those are really kind of three that come around first. and. Uh, I really thought that was something interesting to explore that I hadn't got to do before. Is is, and I like characters that have arcs. I tend to play characters that either start good and bad, or start bad and end good. And it's great to have that travel. It's always really fun to play. Um, but Ian started, you know, bad and went to good quickly, which is really nice to experience as well. Uh, just through observation, he doesn't speak very much in the first introduction of him. You kind of just see him watching Wanda and, and figuring her out and sort of putting the pieces together, which is a good challenge. Do the aliens have? Genders, or are they just like souls that go into the bodies that they? Yeah, I think they're kind of gender neutral <laughs> in a way, and then yeah, whoever's whoever they put into, because you know they've been in different animals, and all different kinds of species, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm 
pretty sure they're just, just a soul. But do they procreate? When they procreate, uh, they, it's still a human reproductive system, so they still have human children, and then I believe uh, the children, the parents of the children get to decide eventually if they want to have uh, a soul put in them or not. Is that right? Like this, I don't know. Oh, okay. That'll be in the same yeah. window, a whole other place. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, I didn't yeah. even know that. Yeah. Was it weird for you and Max to keep kissing the same girl on set? It was uh, like those scenes where you would kiss her and then she would. Yeah, there was one scene in particular where I, I kiss her. At least I got to kiss her first. <laughs> um, I got to, and I had to kiss her, and then I had to go out and call Max over, and then he had to kiss her. I imagine it was much more strange for Sersha than it was for yeah. for for, uh, for me. Um, you know, it's just, it's some days you go to the office and you do a normal scene, and some days you go in and you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta kiss a girl and have your friend do it, too. <laughs> Is there, like, sappy seconds jokes, or was she yeah. rewind the plots in between? We try, you know, we try, we, we try to, uh, it seems to get, again, it's boring. Uh, everyone's just such a, such a damn professional that it was just kind of like, you know, you just joke around in between each scene. It's the only way, it's the only way it works. So when you heard about this this movie, Stephanie Meyer, the word Stephanie Meyer, and this other, you know, after Twilight, mm -hmm. was there a, I mean, it's it's a good and bad, I'm assuming, because you, you can tell the Twilight actors, they love the fact that they broke through, but then you also have the bad side, the negative side, where it's the, all the media attention. Did that ever come into your mind, like, I could be in that position? No. No? Uh, it really didn't. Um, you know... And reading the script, I didn't know what to expect because I thought, you know, okay, is this going to be, what demographic is this going to be again? Are they going to try to reinvent or try to recreate uh, something that they've already done? And that's what really shocked me the most when I read the script was, this is, this is nothing like that. This is no one trying to say, let's just recreate another phenomenon. It was an artist going, I'm going to branch out and I'm going to do what else, something else that interests me. And I think that's really courageous of her to, to, to do. And I think Andrew Nichol did a fantastic job of seeing that and adapting that into a screenplay. Um, but no, I mean, I think if you spend too much time thinking about the repercussions of the work you do, it's only going to affect the work you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all, in, in rehearsal, we just, we, we said out loud, let's make the movie with as much integrity as possible. And uh, it's easy to do that when you have this type, this caliber of cast behind it, demanding that that happens. And we'll see if that works for us or not, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you feel, on, on a similar note, how do you feel about um, the comparisons that are made to Twilight? Or do you even find the movies comparable? Uh, I don't personally find these movies really comparable, uh, other than that there's young actors in it, uh, and there's a love story. But young, young actors and love stories have been around since the age of storytelling. Um, no matter, at this day and age, where young adult films are, it's inevitable. Percy Jackson gets compared to Twilight. Everyone wanted that to be Twilight. Uh, it does, if you're, uh, I'm number four. Anything, I've, anything I've done, really, it's it's kind of silly. Everyone kind of wants it to be that next thing because it was an amazing thing. It was a phenomena, and uh, it's a, an exciting thing to witness. Um, but you can't recreate it, and it has to be organic. And it's inevitable, inevitable to be asked that. And if, I guess if people uh, like the work we did, then that's all we can really hope. Yeah. What's the craziest rumor you've ever heard about yourself? Craziest rumor I've ever heard. Uh, I tend to stay away from from that kind of stuff because usually you go find that online. Yeah. Uh, I had an interviewer yesterday to ask if my dad was from some place called like Westershireville or something. I've <laughs> never heard of it. I was like, he's from like middle of nowhere, Ohio. <laughs> Nothing sounds that fancy there. Um, I don't know where people get their facts sometimes. But nothing, nothing like, I have to think about it, but nothing like comes up. Sounds like something was on your Wikipedia. Something, something. yeah. There's some <laughs> yeah. good journalism there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's next for you? The Percy Jackson sequel uh, comes out in August. We mm -hmm. just finished that one, fresh off of that one. So now it's, uh, now I'm just, just, I'm really picky. I tend to be really picky, mm -hmm. for better or for worse. And, and now it's kind of that search for that next thing that makes me, that gives me the feeling that I had going into the host of, like, it, there's, you know, feels right, there's something right about this, and uh, you know, so it's just being patient. What was it like shooting in the desert, we heard a lot of uh, stories about sandstorms? Yeah, and... I personally, I find myself to be a desert person, uh, I really, I really enjoy, I feel like a kid out there, uh, the, the scene where Max and I were climbing on the rocks with binoculars and, and spying on the seekers, and uh, I haven't felt like a kid in so long. It was, it was like, it was like, you know, it was, it was being a kid with a budget. We had great, we had a great wardrobe, we had the binoculars. Um, yeah, it was, and it was beautiful out there in the Navajo Nation land, where it was called Shiprock. That was the exterior of our cave. And it was just completely unadulterated land. Just like, 
pure and pristine. And uh, uh, yeah, it was gorgeous. What was it like shooting in such close quarters in that cave? Um, it's interesting. It really informs you. It really does because these people are sort of trapped in there. And uh, luckily, we can go outside. It's Baton Rouge. It's gorgeous when, when we need to. Um, but it, it's it's great to have those like chickens running around. Francis Fisher has them on her head and this <laughs> burning sage. I mean, it, let, it lets you know what I mean. It's it's it lets you know what life would be like, for sure. Any filming bloopers you can share? Uh, any filming bloopers? Oh gosh, these are questions I always feel like I should be prepared for because we could ask them, and I don't. None that I can. None that I can remember. Or any like fun yeah, behind the scenes. I'm trying to say like if, if there's any days. Max and I kind of get like fits of uncontrollable laughter. Yeah. We had one yesterday. We ruined some of Chris Corgill's interview yesterday. We had to do it again for her later. I mean, like could not control ourselves. We did after I was working him and I. We set each other off, and it's bad. Like there's no turning back. <laughs> you're in a cave. You're getting slapped. She's happy. going nuts. Yeah. It happens. It definitely happens. Did you guys stop, ruin a lot of scenes and have to retake? Not a lot, luckily. Or? No, not, not a lot, luckily. We were, we were, we were very civilized <laughs> on, on set. How was it like working with Saoirse? I mean, everyone's describing her as kind of this old soul. Mm. Not, you know, she's young, but... Yeah, no, she's precocious. Very... She was produced precocious at 14 on Love the Bones. Uh, she's, she's a very unique actress, and I personally don't know of any young actresses her age that could have pulled this part off so seamlessly. She really created two distinct characters, Melanie and Wanda, and I say that it makes sense because she's sort of two people in that way as well. When she's on set, she's and the cameras are rolling. She's she's so professional and she's so focused and she's there with you. But as soon as those, those cameras stop, her and I are wrestling or you know joking around and and, and making uh, making the experience as light as possible. And uh, yeah, she's I have worked with a young actress like that before. What about her accent? She's great. She's pretty clear she, to understand. It's so unfair. She can just like <laughs> drop it or pick a new one up. I, I, I envy her yeah. very much in that way. Yeah, when she um, introduced the film on Friday, I was kind of like, what did she say? <laughs> People gasp. People gasp when Max talks for the first time in like the Q&As. It's it, it, literally, <gasps> and so on. It's so easy for him. I, I'm like, it's not fair. It's so easy for you. You just like, people, girls will come up to him and be like, will you say my name? <laughs> and they'll say her name and then they'll melt. <laughs> So on the reverse, if you had to do an accent for for a movie, you find it very I, difficult. Terrifying, uh, terrifying. I mean, I know Max. Has, you know, he worked he worked his ass off to really get that right. He did it so well. Um, it's very very scary. Uh, you know, it's like it's funny. I realized uh, a couple years ago that you know I used to look at people from like it's you know, England, let's say, and be like, wow, you can do so many accents. You can do a Scottish accent, you can do an Irish, a German accent. And then I realized, oh, they're so close to each other. That's why they can all travel to each other. Where it's like in the States, almost everyone could do a Southern accent. They could do a New York accent. It's the same thing. So I don't beat myself up about it too much because, you know, we can do all those accents we grew up with as much like they can. But, yeah, it'd be difficult. Do you have any guilty pleasure TV shows right now? Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. Uh, but I do love Parks, Parks and Recreation. Yeah. I'm a, oh, my God, I'm obsessed mm -hmm. with that show. Um... Modern Family is a really great comedy. I tend to watch comedies because they're, you know, the, 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 the thirty minute span. I can I can really sit there and get through it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, those are probably the two that I really watch the most. Yeah. Reading the book for the first time, uh, was there a character you were drawn to other than your own? I initially read for Jared. I thought I would want to play Jared, you know, drive cars, shoot guns, be a general <laughs> tough guy. But I could I couldn't be happier that Andrew saw me as Ian and and. and called me that day to tell me why he thought so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy for it. Really, really. 